In British history, King Edward IV's name resonates as a symbol of the turbulent era known as the Wars of the Roses. This era, depicted vividly in the White Queen TV series, brings to life the complexities of Edward's journey, capturing the essence of the Wars of the Roses and the intricate dynamics that shaped his reign. Edward IV was born to Richard, Duke of York and Cecily Neville. His family belonged to the House of Plantagenet and his ancestors had sat on the English throne since 1154. However, the house had split into two opposing factions, the House of Lancaster and the House of York, both keen to claim the throne for themselves. Whilst the Lancastrians had ruled since 1399, Henry VI's weak rule and subsequent mental illness prompted Edward's father, as a descendant to Edward III via the Yorkist branch, to pursue his own claim to the throne in 1455. Richard's opposition to the Lancastrians was the cause of the famous civil wars between the two houses, known as the War of the Roses, because of the emblem of each house, a red rose for the Lancastrians and a white rose for the Yorkist, which continued periodically through a series of fierce, bloody battles for the next 30 years. On the 25th of October, 1460, the English Parliament passed the Act of Accord, which stated that Henry VI should remain king for the rest of his life, but that Richard and or his heirs would succeed Henry to the throne. This was prompted in no small part by the symbolic gesture of Richard forcing his way into the royal court and laying his hand on the empty throne of England 15 days previously. Henry had fled and gone into hiding. However, the Act of Accord was by no means the cause of a ceasefire between the warring houses. Protective of the rights of her young son, Edward of Westminster, Prince of Wales, Henry's wife, the strong-willed Queen Margaret, and her supporters were in fierce opposition of the act. When Richard and his youngest son, Edmund, were killed in the pursuit of the crown at the Battle of Wakefield on the 30th of December, 1460, his father's claim to the throne passed to Edward. Having imprisoned the ineffectual Henry in March, 1461, Edward and his supporters faced a formidable army raised by Margaret and the Lancastrians at the Battle of Toton, a small Yorkshire village, on the 29th of March, 1461. Whilst Edward had gathered support from those nobles who were furious that Margaret had so openly defied the Act of Accord, the Yorkists were still heavily outnumbered. In the largest and bloodiest battle to take place during the Wars of the Roses, it was reputed that over half of the 50,000 Yorkist and Lancastrian soldiers lost their lives. In the end, Edward's men were only able to prevail in the battle when the Yorkist archers used the strong winds caused by the overhead snowstorm to outdistance their opponents and eventually clinch victory, with Edward forcibly seizing the throne from the fleeing Henry. He would remain on the throne for the next nine years. Whilst Edward had successfully claimed the throne, Margaret was still determined that Henry, or her son, should be reinstated as king. The Queen had initially been exiled to Scotland, but following her move to France and aided by King Louis XI, she hatched a plot to overthrow Edward, with the unlikely alliance of Edward's previously staunch supporter, Richard Neville, Earl of Warwick. Warwick's initially strong bond with Edward had deteriorated throughout the latter's reign, particularly when Edward married Elizabeth Woodville, the widow of a Lancastrian supporter, rather than the Queen of Neville's choosing. Edward's younger brother, George, Duke of Clarence, was also recruited to the cause when his father-in-law Neville promised that he would be next in line to the throne after Edward of Westminster, should he support the Lancastrians against his brother. However, Neville had his own agenda for the throne, and after marrying his daughter to Edward of Westminster, he managed to overthrow his fellow Yorkists with the support of Margaret's army, allowing Henry VI to reclaim the throne on the 30th of October, 1470, which sent Edward into hiding. The weak King Henry left Neville to essentially rule on his behalf. Henry's restoration to the throne was unsurprisingly brief. Having unwisely provoked a war with Burgundy, the current Duke of Burgundy, Charles the Bold, resolutely sided with Edward and provided the support he needed to reclaim his throne 
less than six months later. With the support of Charles, his brother Richard, Duke of York, and the once again loyal George, Edward achieved a resounding victory at the Battle of Barnet, which was then a small town north of London, on the 14th of April, 1471. It was here that Warwick fell, and less than a month later, Henry's son and heir, Edward of Westminster, was killed in action at the Battle of Tewkesbury on the 4th of May. Having lost his protectors, the imprisoned Henry is said to have died of melancholy, a deep sadness and despair, shortly afterwards on the 21st of May, 1471. However, historians have argued that it is entirely probable that his death was ordered by Edward IV, once the threat of the stronger Lancastrian claimant, Edward of Westminster, had subsided. And what of Edward's brother George? Having realised his mistakes and rejoined his older brothers Edward and Richard to defend the Lancastrians at Barnet, he was nonetheless tried for treason against the newly restored king and was executed in private at the Tower of London on the 18th of February, 1478. The widely held belief that George was drowned in a casket of Madeira wine, also prompted to be true by Shakespeare in his plays of Henry VI and Richard III, was thought to be a humorous reference to the fact that George was fond of a drink or two. However, a body believed to be that of George was exhumed and it showed that he had not been beheaded, the most common means of execution for a noble of his position in the 15th century. So his demise may have indeed been merrier than most. Edward's restoration to the throne meant he became only the second British monarch to sit on the throne twice. Ironically, the first being, of course, Henry VI. In contrast to his initial rise to the throne, Edward did not face any rivals for the crown during the latter half of his reign, and despite warring with France and Scotland, the remainder of his rule was relatively peaceful. Indeed, Edward became one of the few male members of his lineage to die from natural causes when he passed away on the 9th of April, 1483, of an undiagnosed illness, supposedly to be either pneumonia or typhoid. Unfortunately, the Yorkist dynasty was to outlive Edward by only two years. Edward's son, Edward V, reigned for a very brief three months at the young age of 13, before he and his younger brother, Richard of Shrewsbury, the first Duke of York, were moved to the Tower of London and famously disappeared without a trace less than a year after Edward had died. Whilst rumours have circulated about their apparent demise over the years, the true reason for their disappearance has never been discovered. Although it is thought that by the order of their uncle and protector, Richard Duke of York, they were murdered. The next and last Yorkist to take the throne was Edward's youngest brother, Richard III, who was killed at the Battle of Bosworth in 1485, thus also becoming the last of the Plantagenet kings.